I spoke with a prospective client who wanted help with retirement planning. He said he felt good about his investment strategy, but he just needed advice on tax efficient withdrawal strategy and then creating a blueprint for retirement. He's one year from retiring. So when we started talking about his investment strategy, he said that he was 90% invested in the S&P 500 index fund, one of them, and then he was 10% cash and conservative funds or bonds. So in this video, I wanna share when an investment strategy similar to this one could actually work quite well and then when it might actually be harming your retirement. And then I'll share what you should be thinking about as you review your own investment mix. But first, welcome back. If I haven't met you yet, I'm Dave Zoller and I own a retirement planning firm with Tim and Luke and Sean. And because we can only work with a select number of clients, we created this channel. So hopefully we can help a lot more people, including you. And we also have some helpful things in the description below this video, like the do-it-yourself retirement plan, if you'd like to look at that. So when I was talking to this prospective client, he said, I've got a high risk tolerance and I can handle the market fluctuations. I, it's really no problem for me. So I said, that's great. That's good to know about your risk tolerance. It's really important. What do you think about mapping out your income plan and seeing how much you need and then just seeing the various outcomes and how it could all kind of play out, you know, the what if scenarios. He said, absolutely, that's what I'm calling you for. So he already knew that the ideal investment mix in retirement is more than just how much risk you can take, right? You know this too. It's really three things and risk tolerance and comfort level is an important one. The second thing is how much risk do you actually need to take in your investments? You can figure that out by finding out how much you want to withdraw from your savings and your investments in retirement. It's part designing your income plan. For him, let's pretend that he had 1 million invested for retirement, and this is just an example, so you can change it to, to your own numbers, but let, if it was 1 million and his income plan only required him to use $2,000 per month from his investments, so withdraw $2,000 per month, then maybe a 90-10 mix could make sense for him. And when I say 90-10, I'm talking about 90% growth investments that probably fluctuate more and then 10 being conservative assets which would be a little bit more of a smoother ride and here's why here's what I mean let me pull up this for uh, a second so we've got 2,000 a month times 12 months so he's got to take 24,000 out of his account his investment accounts each year now if he had a 90 growth to 10 conservative mix and he had a million dollars that that 10% is about 100k or so and that 100k if you're looking at, just pretend it's a two bucket system where you've got growth and you've got conservative here. Well, that 100K could be about four years worth of withdrawals, four years worth of taking out 24K per year. And that could make a lot of sense for him. Now, some clients want two years worth of, of conservative uh, monies so that they could, uh, two years worth of withdrawals in their conservative monies. Some clients want 10 years. And it's really not just what they want, It's first figuring out what's possible and what they, they need and then designing what they want. For instance, someone might be more comfortable with having 50% of their IRA in cash, let's say. Well, if you map out their retirement income plan, you, they might find out that because of inflation and other things, it might not look that great. For this client example, after we mapped out his, his plan, he was able to have a really high chance of success even if he lowered his risk down and lowered the expected return from his investments. But let's say that he had to spend $5,000 per month instead of 2,000, and he wanted to have three to four years worth of patrols in his conservative bucket. Well, then he may have to switch up his investment plan and his risk number. Otherwise, he runs a risk of if there was an extended period of uh, a down period or an extended bear market or something like that, for more than two years, he may have to sell shares of the, the, the high growth funds or index funds uh, when it's down, which really should be tried to be avoided. He may also have something called the sequence of returns risk, which is really, it's basically just the first few years after you retire and the returns that you get following that and, and what your withdrawal rate, those first few years are very important. But with his current plan and with the withdrawal amount, he had options. So that was a great place to be in. But there's one more important thing that he was missing from his investment strategy. By the way, if you like these sorts of retirement focused videos, please give this video a like so that I know that and then I'll continue to make more of them. And if you wanna plan your retirement without the help of a financial advisor, check out the DIY do-it-yourself retirement plan below. So what was that last important thing that was missing from this person's investment plan? You probably can already guess at what it is. When it comes to the risk level, he was up there. He was okay with high risk 
but he also had home country bias. He wasn't diversified. If you're not a hedge fund or a professional investor, staying diversified can really benefit you, especially if you'd like to smooth the ride a little bit. And here's an example of what I mean. This is the uh, different asset classes and what they've done over the last few years up until end of 2020. And as you can see, so this is US small cap companies. They're the orange. So you can kind of track to see uh, the ups and downs that they might have or just take uh, cash for instance, uh, last few years, not performing as well as the other asset classes, but some years uh, it's great when there's a, a down period and things like that. But you can kind of see the line for many of these is going like this, but there's one in the middle here that is a, a balanced mix between many different asset classes. And you can kind of see it's more of a, a smoother ride kind of staying towards the middle. And many of our clients, they prefer when they get to this retirement period, they prefer to have a little bit of a more smooth ride now that they're not adding to their accounts anymore, but instead they're making withdrawals. So asset allocation is very important in retirement, especially if you can have assets that do well during the different economic seasons that we may go through. So for this client, here's what we did. We built out his plan, we used historical averages, and then we used lower than expected rates of returns to see what would happen in that case. The last 30 years for him, when he was experiencing down periods, those he actually took advantage of those because he was adding each month from his paycheck into his 401k. And it actually, dollar cost averaging can have a lot of benefits as you're continuing to add every month. But for the next 20 or 30 years, he's gonna be taking out money consistently every month and he's basically reverse dollar cost averaging, which could work against him during market dips. So there's a lot that goes into this. That's why defining that income plan and then that withdrawal plan is so important because that'll give you an idea of what sort of risk you need to take for your retirement plan to be successful and how much you should have in conservative bucket or you know the, the moderate bucket or the growth bucket. And just to recap, to figure out your investment mix, it could be a good practice to first figure out how much you wanna take out of your savings or investments each month then design that retirement income plan and then work backwards to see what sort of allocation, investment allocation could fit into that plan. If you need help with this, feel free to reach out to me or have a call with me. You can do that by clicking on the our website below and click get started. I don't always have time, but I'll reply to you either way. So hope that was helpful. Thanks and have a good rest of your day. Take care.